everybody. Once again, we're glad you're here celebrating with us. This is our 42nd annual Michael Carter Fest of the Four Decades of Festival Traditions being celebrated on both land and wood. When you have the best, anyone, the first thing you need to do is pick up a festival brochure. You can pick them up inside the park, but also do a few things in them right now. It has a layout of the land, tells you what bands are playing, and all the great and various events that we have going on here. Also, do my mind, children's activities, ranging from face painting to higher band down, and they can take and really, really want to have an interest in the Treasure Island where the Quaker is Monica Sutton. Also, you can always check out the website for the Quaker Island Museum. Also, you can check out the website for the Quaker Island Museum. And at Burbank O, and that's behind the other side of this one. Don't forget to check out the World of Mermaid Show in the afternoon. Also, if you get a chance, take a walk over to the Cobra Craft Gear and make a Virginia Wine Garden. That's located at Town Park, Fountain Park. Next to the Wine Side District, featuring 16 craft beers, two Virginia Wineries, and live music, of course, from the Hoda House. Also, do want to remind you this kind of an afternoon entertainment over in the Riverside District Blue Lake Stage at 2 p.m. this afternoon at Williams and also do on the Boycott Stage this afternoon at 2.45 at Avenue Valley. Once again, to find out for the rest of the activities that are going on in the entertainment, get back to that festival for the truth. Once again, a reminder we're at the 47th annual of the Carpenter Fest, produced by Norfolk Fest events, and partnership with the city of Norfolk. Norfolk Carpenter Fest is presented by AT&T, sponsored by the Riverside District, Southern Hollywood, and the Carpenter Do you? Yeah. Sure. Actually, you can read the card. And 13 years. Right. Yeah, I live out in Moya. That's that? Oh. Yeah, I got my I house in Kendra. I've been working my ass off on it, but you know, I need an office. I need somebody to tell me. Excellent. Sure, I'd be delighted. Give me a nice mural in my living room. Yeah, give me a call. I'd be delighted, Brian. Okay, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise.
I think I can get away with that composition. Um, that is to say, I think it's close enough to actual. Not that anybody looking at it will see the But it needs to be, the <coughs> proportions need to be close enough, you know? Uh, <laughs> and in a sense, of course, all of this doesn't, it's not the important thing. The important thing is play of light. <clears throat> so I'm going to do something now that I often do. I don't like to do it, but... Um, 
<clears throat> the lighting in this photograph is going to be morning light coming in from the right. And unfortunately, there weren't any bands playing uh, this morning. But uh, I'm going to have I'm going to I'm going to put a band up there playing in the morning. <laughs> so hopefully people won't notice. Too bad. Well, hopefully it won't bother them anyway.
those strokes, my main concern is to get the uh, light position you know, in the right, light out of the in the right area. Ready. Good enough for now. back and look at this from a distance. See how we're doing. Thanks for watching. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Hi Susan, I missed your comment earlier. Thank you. I am indeed having fun. This is just about the most fun I can have while painting. Um, I hope you can hear me. I'll, I'll do my best to stay near a microphone. Um, Oh, let me double check, make sure. Yeah, okay. Um, I uh, spent several minutes changing the drawing, modifying the drawing. Um, after much back and forthing of my mind, I finally decided yes to. Um, to make this this tallest building go off the top of the canvas. 
there's several reasons for that, and I think it's clearly counterintuitive, at least to most non-artists or beginner artists. Non-artists would say, why would you cut off the top of the building? We want to see, we want to see the whole building. We feel like you're cutting off the top of the building. And that's a a wrong impulse, if you will. Um, Again, for two reasons at least. One is, if you want to make something look like it's tall, then punch it through the top of the canvas. If you want to make something look like it's not too tall, then it's not tall enough to reach the top of the canvas. Does that make sense? More importantly than that, though, um, and what finally pushed, pushed the decision over the top, <laughs> so to speak, was uh, if this building was not punching through the top of the canvas, then I would essentially, unless I do something really funky with the clouds, which I may do any in addition, but I would have a boundary ratio of one. I don't expect, unless you unless you follow me regularly, I don't expect you to know what a boundary ratio is. So let me explain that to you. I got this from Bob Rankin. He got it from somebody else, I understand. Uh, boundary is the edges of the painting. If it's a square painting or a rectangular painting with four sides, each side of the painting is one of the boundaries. So far, it's simple, right? So this, this painting has four boundaries. One, two, three, four. Very typical. And um, it turns out that human beings like to see a different number of uh, color changes or shape changes in each boundary. Now the most, the most simple and most common mistake to make with regard to boundary issues is exactly the one that I just mentioned. It's when you're doing landscape paintings and you have sky all along the top of the painting. And in fact, if you have blue sky all along the top of your painting, then you are violating this boundary ratio rule, which is we like to see a different number of shapes. The number number one does not count. In other words, if it's one color all the way across any boundary, we find that unpleasant. So punching this building through the top of the canvas gives me a boundary number of three. One, two, three. And part of the rest of the theory is we like to see a different number of shapes uh, on each boundary. That's getting a little sophisticated. But that's uh, in, in, in short description why I put this uh, building, why I finally decided to make the building go through the top of the canvas so that I have a boundary ratio of three at the top of the canvas. Cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Deal. You notice I keep turning around and looking at the scene. When I get the chance, I'll turn you guys around so you can see. Um, but I have to be very careful not to be influenced by the light that's on the subject right now. Morning light is most certainly not morning light anymore.
Thank you. Yeah? Is, uh, did you ask, is this impressionist? Impressionistic, I say. Impressionistic. Impressionistic, I say. <laughs> but it's going to be quite a bit more realistic when I'm done. It's going to be quite a bit more realistic when I'm done. Yeah. All of this is just un underpainted. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I should quit right now.
really? <laughs> That's the funnest part.
Thank you. Thank you for returning. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm not talking much today, am I? <laughs> I'm working too hard. I'm enjoying it, but I'm working hard. I'm doing an awful lot of detail in acrylic. For some reason, I just find it easier to keep going in acrylic. I will switch to oil, and probably pretty soon. But I'm uh, forcing myself to get a lot. I'm more of the drawing, more of the drawing finished in acrylics, which is typically, which is the pattern. That is to say, um, I tend to stay in acrylics longer uh, when the drawing is more complicated. And uh, yes, this. <laughs> This, paint, this counts as more complicated, partly just because of the size of the thing. I'm anxious to do some um, glazes. But I want to get more of the drawing finished, get more of the drawing correct before I do that. So. Glazes, you know, really, really serve to unify a canvas. When you take, you know, one color and go over much of the canvas, Makes sense that it's going to pull the canvas together. Is that my trumpet? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's mine. <laughs> if I suddenly need a break from painting, I'll pick up the trumpet. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yeah, it helps a lot. <laughs> when I was your age, I could only take with one hand. Too. I forced myself to learn. The festival bought the buying these this year. So the festival gets to keep them. Pardon? I don't know. Well, I use them for marketing for one thing. And uh, I don't know. Do they have an I so I assume they have an office. Now sometimes the festival will take them and auction them off at one of their annual fundraisers. That 
That's some, sometimes that works really well. They can make more money than they pay me sometimes. Thank you. Some in the shade. I'm gonna come down. I've been watching you on YouTube as I traveled by bus. Oh, did you? Oh, good. Together with my little. What fun. All right, welcome back. I am changing things up here a little bit. Uh, I've done a glaze over the whole canvas, over the whole this part of the canvas, over the whole painting, and I've done uh, pencil. Normally I come in and do uh, dark details in oil, but I don't think I need to this time. For some reason, there's, there's enough dark. If I discover that I have to come back and do some dark details in oil, I will. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and launch in, and I'm not sure, either local color on this building and this building, or sky, or focal point. Uh, I think I'm going to start down here in the focal point. Focal point pit. There we go. So I think we have some brass in there. Take some white. I want that up a little bit. I do not want to get into a lot of detail in this crowd of people. I've got 150 people drawn in here, and I'll be, <laughs> I'll really be up a creek if I start doing detail. So I'm trying really hard to stay abstract. element that I'm working toward on this painting is this sort of a shaft of light that comes in from the upper right down here, broken by this line. But uh, that's what I'm Hello. Good. That's good. I'm a little tired. 
here with a slightly lighter color. That old trick almost always looks really good. So anything that's almost always Exactly what's wrong with the two. I 
took the paint that's too light and tried to just make it immediate mid-tone by scumbling. That, that's not a good thing. I have just a minute between bands, so I can talk to you just a little bit. This is coming along slowly. Uh, I think I'm happy with it. <laughs> I won't know until tomorrow. You know. I still got several layers to go on this crowd of people, and by the way, sun is shining on it now, and it's getting very difficult to paint on it when, when the sun is shining. I might have to, I'll, I have to wait on that. In the meantime, I have several other things that I can work on. Generally, I've been mixing up a color on my brushes and then and then painting throughout the whole canvas, using looking for places that I can use that color. I think these buildings are all finished. Fairly happy with them. I learned years ago, and uh, I used to say often that the best painting happens while you're trying hard to do something else. And that is so true still to this day. Even when you know it's true, it still happens. The best stuff on this, cam on this canvas are the accidents. A little blush of pink in 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 there. Uh, I mean, uh, there's just so many. I mean, I wish there were a lot more happy accidents, but but it really is the, the accidental things that are the best part of the painting. That is so true.
the sun is at about its optimal position in the sky, I need to skedaddle out of here and go take a bunch of pictures so I have stuff to paint tomorrow. Okay, bye. The, uh, the view that I've been painting, more or less, all day. And it's nice and cool, getting that way anyway. And I just finished the painting, and the last band just finished playing. There's the finished painting.